wolves were once extraordinarily common across all of Great Britain, but sadly, due to a combination of deforestation and active hunting through bounty systems, they had all but vanished from the island completely by no later than the early mid to 18th century. But how exactly did these beautiful creatures go extinct in the British Isles? Well, let's find out. It is thought the wolves first arrived in Britain around 10 to 12,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age, making their sudden disappearance even more saddening. The first evidence of the people of Britain actively hunting wolves, which would eventually lead to their extinction, comes when in 950 AD, King Athelstan of England imposed an annual tribute of 300 wolf skins on Welsh King Huiladar. It is worth noting though that English historian William Malmesbury stated that Athelstan actually requested gold and silver and that it was his nephew, ironically named Edgar the Peaceful, who demanded the wolf skins. As well as this tribute, further laws were put in place with the likely intent of lowering the enormous wolf population around this time. One of these laws or actions was that several criminals, rather than being put to death, would be ordered to provide a certain number of wolf tongues annually. It does not seem like these were completely irrational actions though, as around this time it appears that wolves were a very big issue in England, particularly in the northern state of Northumbria where the monk Galfred observed that during this time, wolves were so numerous in Northumbria that it was virtually impossible for even the richest flock masters to protect their sheep, despite employing many men for the job. In further efforts to combat this problem, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle states that the month of January was known as Wolf Monath, as this was the first full month of active wolf hunting by the nobility. Officially, this hunting season would end on the 25th of March, meaning it encompassed the cubbing season. The reason for this time frame being that the wolves were at their most vulnerable at this time and their fur was of a greater quality. After the Norman conquest some 100 years later, the new kings began employing servants as wolf hunters, with many holding lands granted on the condition that they fulfilled this duty. William the Conqueror even granted the lordship of Ruddesdale, Northumberland, to Robert de Umfreville on condition that he defended the land from enemies and wolves. As well as all this, under the new Norman rule, there were no restrictions on or penalties for hunting wolves. Fortunately for the wolves at this time though, they were more often trapped than outright hunted. Unfortunately for them though, this would not last long. And a couple hundred years later, during the reign of King Edward I, hunting wolves with the sole intention of exterminating them would begin. After the king ordered that all wolves in his kingdom should be exterminated and personally employed a man by the name of Peter Corbett, with instructions to destroy the entire wolf populations in the counties of Gloucestershire, Herefordshire, Worcestershire, Shropshire, and Staffordshire, all of which were areas near to, or actually a part of, the Welsh marches where wolves were more common than in the southern areas of England. Sadly, things would go from bad to worse for the wolves in the coming century, as roughly a hundred years later, in the 43rd year of Edward III's rule, Thomas Engain was given land in the county of Northampton under the condition that he find special hunting dogs to kill wolves in the counties of Northampton, Rutland, Oxford, Essex, and Buckingham. Depressingly, yet expectedly, all this hunting had the foreseeable outcome on the wolf populations in England and Wales, with wolves thought to have become extinct, or at least very rare, during the reign of Henry VII uh, in the years 1485 to 1509. Well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'll probably make a part two to this one, now that I think about it, about the extinction of the much longer-lasting wolves of Scotland, as well as some of the ideas of reintroducing them to Britain. So stand on the lookout for that video if you're interested in this sort of thing, which I'm sure you are if you're watching this video. Anyways though, with all that being said, I hope you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.